So welcome scholars. Hopefully this video works well for you to be able to see the um, way that we can add the chemistry formatter in. And um, this is a plugin that you can get for Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So those of you who are on the video along with me, if you'll go ahead and search in Google and you just search for chemistry formatter, then it's this one under Christopher King. Well, he's got a fun name, doesn't he? And um, this other one just below it is more recent. I haven't seen this come up before. Um, I haven't tried it. I'm not sure really about its provenance, but this one is the one I've been using for years. And um, if you go to his website, it shows you some of what his little plugin does. And you can scroll down and you can find the instructions for how to uh, get in and add this plugin into your programs. And if you've got any of the more recent versions of Word, this 2010, what version pretty much still works with everything. So um, you can do a right click on that and you can save the link as something and it should give you a choice for where to save it. And um, it's probably being blocked because I'm recording, but there it comes up. So um, you get to choose where you save that. It's probably gonna go into a downloads folder, okay? You can do the same thing for Excel. If you want this in Excel, you can do the same thing if you want this in PowerPoint. But Word is probably gonna be the big one where you really wanna use it. And then up here under the add-in, it tells you exactly where it has to go and for where your path name is. And so if you're using Windows 8 or Windows 10, the path where it has to go is gonna look more like this here. And so if you pull up your file explorer and you're looking for that particular download, it might show up in your recent files. And I'm switching back just to double check. It says it's under C colon users, your username and then app data. So in here, you'd wanna to go to your C drive, users, username, app data, which is gonna be hidden and you may have to change the properties of your file folder to be able to um, show the hidden folders there. And then app data and then roaming. And then just to double check from there, Microsoft Word and startup. So Microsoft Word and startup. And you can see I've already got a copy here. Um, from when I added it to this computer back in August when I was working on the macromolecules packet for you guys, I think. Um, once that is there, then you can open up Word. And when you open up Word, starting, starting, starting. Probably should have opened this before starting this. Okay, here we go, it finally loaded. So here is Word. And what you can do is you can go into a blank document and under File, you then go to Options, wherever you see that on the list. Comes up with a set of options to choose from. You wanna go down to Add-ins. And under add-ins, you can manage your com add-ins. And there's a couple, there's OneNote, there's Adobe Acrobat. You can also go down and um, manage your Word add-ins. And there's the chemistry formatter. 
You want to make sure that's checked. Once that's checked, and if you don't see it, you can add it by navigating to where it is. Once you see that checked, then you see this little icon up here for chemistry formatter. And the really great thing with this, let me make some really big text here. Great thing about this is let's say I want to talk about C6H12O6. Well, I can take that, highlight that, and apply the chemistry formatter and automatically subscripts everything as it should be. Let's say I want to show a double replacement reaction. Let's say I want to show HCl aqueous plus NaOH. Well, no, that won't work because it doesn't have a lot of subscripts. Let's do phosphoric acid aqueous plus sodium hydroxide aqueous goes to sodium phosphate aqueous and 3H2O liquid. So of course, that's a little big, so it goes over multiple lines. Let me bring that down so it all fits on one line. And right here with this whole reaction, if I take that and apply the chemistry formatter, again, it subscripts everything there that's supposed to be subscripted. Now for the review with ionic equations, which is the whole reason why we're kind of going through this, that phosphoric acid happens to be a weak acid. So that will not ionize. That's gonna to stay together as the phosphoric acid. But then we're gonna have this sodium ion that would be aqueous, this hydroxide ion that would be aqueous, and actually to balance it out, we should have had a three here, right, originally? So we should have a three here and a three here. That's gonna to go to three and a plus again, aqueous plus phosphate, three minus aqueous plus three H2O liquid. Now this is spread out over more than one line. There isn't a whole lot we could do about that, although we could change the orientation of the paper. Almost all fits on one line. So let me just knock that down one more size step. So what you can see here, if you were trying to go through this and subscript everything or in superscript everything, you've got this weird little combination here which is that gonna make it 43 as a subscript or 43 as a superscript? Well, let's find out. And there you go. For most ions, this formatter is able to tell the difference between what should be a superscript for charge and what should be a subscript on the ion, on the polyatomic ion. So every now and then it won't quite get it. So if you try to do this with oxygen, it might not know exactly how to treat that. Do you want that to be O2 with a minus charge? Do you want that to be O with a two minus charge? Um, and there's other things that you have to play around with it a little bit on. Notice that it changed the reaction arrows that Word automatically puts in. If you do two dashes and a caret, Word automatically replaces that normally as that arrow, that chunky arrow. If you apply the chemistry formatter, to that arrow, it turns it into a nice, thin looking arrow. You can also do different settings in here to get the reversible arrows for the reversible or equilibrium reactions. But as you're going through and you're working on your net ionic equations and going through maybe here and saying, oh, hey, I wanna do a squiggly line under that. Well, how do you do a squiggly line? You might be able to go into font, and you might be able to choose an underline style. And here's a squiggly line underline style. And you can use that then for underlining, okay? So the sodium is a spectator ion. Another synonym that sometimes people use would be like a bystander. So the net ionic equation for this particular reaction would be H3PO4 aqueous plus three hydroxides aqueous goes to three H2Os liquid and a phosphate ion aqueous. 
So for this double replacement reaction, it's the formation of the water that is the driving force that you would really want to circle. Um, not sure you can do that with the font, but you could go up into insert in Word and you can draw a picture, no, sorry, you can draw a shape. What's that duck doing up there? You can draw a circle or an ellipse and you could draw that around the H2O. You might need to make it a little bit bigger and then move it. Notice that's also kind of opaque. So you can go up to shape fill and say no fill. And then that would circle that particular species for you. So this first one would be your molecular equation. The second one would be your total ionic equation. This third one would be your net ionic equation. And again, the way you get the chemistry formatter to work is by going to options, add-ins, and you want to choose your word add-ins to find the chemistry formatter for word. And once that's in there, then it works pretty well for most of this stuff. Every now and then there might be something you have to adjust by hand, but it's a little bit easier to go in by hand and use the superscript and the subscript than it is to on a few things than it is to have to do it for every single thing as you go, especially if you're trying to type and choose all these reaction arrows. So I hope that's helpful for you as you um, finish up this class and as you go forward when you might need to write chemical formulas. And um, if you've got any questions about this, please jump into Zoom. If not, um, yeah.